Gyome Himejima is the stone Hashira of the Demon Slayer Corps. As a stone-breathing user, Gyome swings around a chained axe and flail, letting him pull off all sorts of wild attacks. Gyome's crazy height and beefy muscles make him look super intimidating. Even though he's totally blind, Gyome makes up for it with his killer hearing and sharp sense of smell. So, Gyome is not just the stone Hashira, he's also the strongest Hashira in the Demon Slayer Corps. That's a big deal, considering how strong the other Hashira are. His sheer physical strength, along with his stone-breathing skills, make him a total beast. He's the only character in the whole series who uses stone breathing. Stone breathing has five known forms. First form. Serpentine Knight Bipolar has Gaiomai, throwing both his axe and flail at the enemy at the same time, then yanking the chain to make them spin and drill through the target. Second form. Upper Smash is where he throws the weapons to create a pincer attack, and then slams the chain down to make it bounce back on the target. Third form. Stone Skin is a defensive move that uses a bunch of slashes to block attacks. Fourth form. Volcanic Rock. Rapid Conquest is a double attack from afar, with the axe and flail spinning on the chain to hit the enemy from a distance. And finally, fifth form. Arcs of Justice unleashes a massive barrage of strikes, with both the flail and axe, dealing a ton of damage. It's pretty obvious that Gyome is insanely powerful, and totally deserves the title of the strongest Hashira. But what's the deal with that secret connection between him and an upper demon moon that I hinted at earlier? Remember that kid from Gyome's temple who got nabbed by a demon and then betrayed the other kids to save his own skin? His name is Kaigaku, and his story is a real roller coaster. Before he ended up at the temple, Kaigaku was an orphan with a rough life, resorting to stealing food just to get by. He figured out that to survive, he had to do whatever it took, no matter what happened to other people. This cutthroat mindset stuck with him and led to him helping a demon kill seven other orphans in exchange for his life. Kaigaku managed to get out of the temple attack without a scratch. A few years later as a teenager, he got taken in by Jigoro Kuwajima, the former Thunder Hashira. He got trained in thunder breathing alongside Jigoro's other student, Zenitsu. Kaigaku, the kid who made a deal with a demon to save his own life and ended up causing the deaths of seven other orphans, eventually joined the Demon Slayer Corps. Kaigaku was super talented and nailed all the thunder breathing forms except the first one, which is the only one Zenitsu could master. Kaigaku thought he was way better than Zenitsu as a demon slayer, and looking at their achievements, it's easy to see why. But knowing he was more talented wasn't enough for Kaigaku. He despised Zenitsu, thinking he was weak and cowardly, and he often mocked and bullied him during their training. When Jigoro decided he wanted both his students to be his successors, Kaigaku was furious. He felt Zenitsu was clearly not up to his level. Jigoro treating Zenitsu as his equal was a huge insult to Kaigaku. While doing his demon slayer thing, Kaigaku ran into another demon. This time it wasn't just any demon, it was Kokushibo, upper rank one of the twelve Kizuki, Muzan Kibutsuji's top demon. During their chat, Kaigaku made it clear he didn't care about anyone else's life, just his own. Kokushibo liked that and offered to make Kaigaku a demon. Kaigaku jumped at the chance and quickly became one of the strongest upper moons thanks to his demon form and thunder breathing. When Jigoro found out his former student had become a demon, he took his own life. This news eventually pushed Zenitsu to confront Kaigaku. Even though Zenitsu was the weaker fighter, he refused to let Kaigaku get away with it. The two former Thunder Breathing students faced off in the final battle. To prove himself worthy of his master's praise, Zenitsu created a new form of Thunder Breathing on the spot. Seventh form, Hanoi Kazuchi no Kami. This new technique helped Zenitsu defeat Kaigaku. He then thanked Kaigaku for making him stronger. So, that's the wild story of Gyomei, the stone Hashira, and his surprising link to an upper rank demon. Gaiomei's crazy strength and unbreakable willpower make him one of the coolest characters in the series, and Kaigaku's story is a perfect contrast to his. Gyomei is super strong and totally deserves the title of the strongest Hashira. But what about that secret connection between Gyomei and an upper rank demon I teased earlier? Remember the orphan from Gyomei's temple who got caught by a demon and then betrayed the other orphans to save himself? Well, that kid is Kaigaku, and his story is full of twists and turns. Before joining the temple, Kaigaku was an orphan with a rough life. He had to steal food to survive. To stay alive, he decided he'd do whatever it took, no matter what happened to others. This ruthless mindset stuck with him, leading him to help a demon kill seven fellow orphans in exchange for his own life. Kaigaku managed to escape that attack unscathed, and a few years later, as a teenager, he was taken in by the former Thunder Hashira, Jigoro Kuwajima, to train in thunder breathing alongside Zenitsu. The boy who cut a deal with a demon to save himself, resulting in the deaths of seven orphans, ended up joining the Demon Slayer Corps. 
Kaigaku was pretty talented and mastered all the thunder-breathing forms except the first one, which, funnily enough, was the only form Zenitsu could master. Kaigaku thought he was way better than Zenitsu as a demon slayer, and looking at their achievements, it's easy to see why. But just knowing he was better wasn't enough for Kaigaku. He hated Zenitsu, seeing him as weak and cowardly. Kaigaku often mocked and bullied Zenitsu during training. When Jigoro wanted both of them to be his successors, Kaigaku was furious, seeing it as an insult that Jigoro put Zenitsu on the same level as him. While on Demon Slayer duty, Kaigaku encountered another demon, but this time it wasn't just any demon. He came face to face with Upper Moon One, Kokushibo, the strongest demon after Muzan, instead of fighting. Kaigaku fell to his knees, begging Kokushibo to spare his life. He even offered to become a demon. And since Kokushibo and Muzan found the idea of turning a former demon slayer into a demon interesting, they agreed. And that's how Kaigaku became a demon. Once again, Kaigaku showed he would do anything to survive, breaking promises and betraying oaths without a second thought. He had no moral compass, only a drive to keep himself alive and serve his own selfish interests. On the flip side, Gyome was willing to sacrifice his life for others, even though he was just a blind monk with no fighting skills. Kaigaku's ruthless and immoral behavior didn't change after becoming a demon. He immediately started eating people to get stronger quickly. He kept using thunder breathing but also developed a blood demon art that let him create and control real lightning during fights. When humans use a breathing style, their moves are inspired by an element, but they don't actually produce that element. A flame breathing user doesn't really make flames. What we see is just an artistic representation. But a breathing style user with real supernatural demonic power can create a new and improved style that combines swordsmanship with actual supernatural abilities. So, when Kaigaku becomes a demon, he can mix his thunder breathing with real black lightning, using it to attack and burn his enemies. All his thunder breathing forms become more deadly and powerful, and his range and speed increase a lot thanks to his demonic powers. Kaigaku was so good as a demon that Muzan promoted him to Upper Moon 6 after Daki and Gutaro were taken down. This news was a huge blow to Kaigaku's former master, the Thunder Hashira Jigoro, who was also Zenitsu's master. Jigoro was so ashamed that one of his students became a demon that he committed seppuku without a second to atone for Kaigaku's actions. When Zenitsu found out about Jigoro's tragic fate, it broke his heart, and he vowed to defeat and destroy Upper Rank 6, Kaku, once and for all. Both Gaiome and Kaigaku will have epic battles in the next arc, the Infinity Castle arc, which I think is the best arc ever. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.